Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Robert Wall here. Um, so just so you know, we went through and we worked with simple lighting. We learned about lights. We learned about lighting types. We we also lit a simple scene and we baked lights in a simple scene. So what we're doing now is we're going to make it a little more complicated. We're going to work with what I call a complete scene. Uh, this is going to be the closest that you're going to see um, within the... Um, uh, the closest that you're going to see when you're done with your Revit models. Uh, and then this process takes place after you've taken your Revit model, run it through 3D Studio Max, and then applied the Autodesk material converter to it, and then export it out to FBX. I'm saying it like this because the tutorial that we have up pre or previously for uh, 3D Studio Max is a little out of date now that we actually have that plugin. So when you get a chance, thank your professor for that because it was tremendous that they were even able to get that plugin for you. Okay, so moving on, uh, we're going to start pretty much from scratch just so you can get an idea of how this should look when you start from the beginning. So very first thing, let's fire up Unity. And what I'm going to do here is we're going to create a new project. I'm going to call this Villa Savoy. That's the model that the interior design department was able to get us for testing purposes. I'm going to create a new folder called Villa Savoy. Again, good name conventions are awesome. I'm going to select that folder. And one more time, because somehow I didn't do that right. Make sure you're set to 3D and then create the project. It's going to take you a couple of seconds and you're going, you're going to, want to let it to, or you want to let it do its thing. Looks like that went faster than I thought. The next thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and bring in your FBX. So in this case here, if I go to uh, where my model is located and take my FBX, and what I want to do is I want to just take this and drag this into the assets folder. You see how it has that uh, no sign there? Uh, it's going to have it in pretty much every place except for two spots, either the assets section or the assets folder. Same place, but just let you know that there is a small difference between the two. If you don't drop it in the right spot, you might have to do it again. So now that that's changed over, I'm going to let go. And you see the, uh, no, it's not a rainbow wheel. I don't know what that is. Windows 8 kind of weirds me out a little bit. Um, blue ring yeah we're just gonna look at the blue ring and we're gonna let it do its business now the bigger your model is and the more stuff it has the longer it takes to import so always make sure it has the time it needs to make sure it gets done sometimes you might just need to walk away go get a snack and come back in about two or three minutes but in this case here you can see the green bar there and it's getting close to being done okay so we have our model imported and now that it's here, you're going to have about three folders as you should. Um, you're going to have the model itself. And right now it does look a little bit strange, but bear with me. We'll figure out why that is in a moment. And then you should have an FBM folder because if everything prop was properly converted by the Autodesk material converter, uh, you'll have all the materials you, that you need that's already set up. And you should have all the corresponding... Uh, materials or shaders that moved over with it and it looks like everything has there's some naming problems here but that's the downside um, I really suggest that you create a very good naming convention because if you don't get used to that whoever you go to work for will become very angry if you do not take the time to name your stuff uh, you'll see why it's important to do that just because I'm working with a file that I did not create um, It'll be a lot simpler for you guys since you are working with files that you make. But in this case here, this is a perfectly normal scenario where someone will create the Revit model or a AutoCAD drawing and hand it off to the 3D visualizer or to um, any other work person. And we have to take those directions and um, uh, put them together. And if you don't name your stuff properly, like you kind of have up here, or I think further on down it gets a little bit weirder like here materials uh, 
things can get confusing and it can take longer than what you expected because things weren't named right. So I really encourage you to name your stuff properly. Anyways, moving on from there, it looks like we have all the folders that we need. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to check on the actual 3D model itself. There's two ways to drag it in. You can either drag it in from up here or you can drag it into the hierarchy. I prefer using the hierarchy. Uh, it gives us a more accurate representation and it's really good at zeroing things out. So zero, zero, zero uh, is where it should be. And as you can tell from here, that's really what you want to, to have. Um, looks pretty good, but for some reason it still doesn't look like this. So what you want to do is you want to take your mouse, move over to where your model is at, and double click on it. And that's going to zoom us out or frame your scene. And for some reason, as you can tell here, when this was exported out from 3D Studio Max, two versions came with it. And uh, that's not something that we really need. It'll just cause clutter, more confusion, more work, more CPU power, things that we don't want to worry about. So what the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my object and twirl down this arrow. And you can see here where the two objects are separate or are separated from each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete one, uh, the one that I don't need. And I'm going to delete the one that's not zeroed out. And you can tell that from here. Or you can actually just tell visually. But if I select this one, I can see this is all zeros. If I select this one here, this one's off slightly. So I'm going to delete that one. It's going to say I'm going to break the prefab instance. Just hit continue. I'll explain what that is in the next tutorial. But right now, we do want to break the prefab. So I'm going to hit continue. So now that we have the, or have it down to one building, if I click the object here and I hit the F key, F for frame. So we're going to frame this and see how it zooms instead of having the two. This is how we know that we are ready to get started. Uh, so I can move around that one singular object. Everything sim seems simplified and we're ready to get started to um, find out where things are set up. So I'll see you on the next one.